Welcome back for more physiology. We're going to be continuing what we've been talking about and take the blood conversation and put a little twist on it. And we're going to start talking about breathing. So this particular talk is about ventilation. And in particular, how do we breathe or how do we ventilate, inhale and exhale? So there's various parts to the anatomy of the, your respiratory system or your ventilation system. And there's no point in really going over all of the anatomy because it's boring. But there's a whole bunch of different pathways that we can take. What you're supposed to do is actually have air go through external nares or your nostrils, move through your nasal cavity, through the internal nares, down the pharynx, into the larynx, down the trachea, through the bronchi, and various other branches, so secondary uh, bronchi, tertiary bronchi, then primary bronchioles, secondary bronchioles, until eventually you reach the alveoli. The big thing that I want to deal, focus on a little bit right now is the lungs. And if you look at the lungs, you'll have to notice that this, there's that blue layer that surrounds the lungs. The two lungs turn out not to be symmetrical, and that has to do with the fact that your heart is in its place. So right here, there's a little dent on the left lobe or your left lung. And the reason for that is your heart's there. So the result is your two lungs aren't equal. But if we look around your lungs, you happen to notice that blue layer. And that turns out to be a layer of serous membrane. So we had four different types of membranes from once upon a long, long, long time ago. Membranes are connective tissue and epithelial tissue. So we had cutaneous membranes, which were skin. We had synovial membranes, which allow like your shoulder and your knee and your hip to work. We had mucous membranes, which are the wet membranes, like what you have inside of your mouth, which allow for secretion and absorption. And then we had synovial mem or serous membranes. And the job of serous membranes is to prevent any two organs from running into each other. Because if they run into each other, you get friction. Friction generates heat and blistering and inflammation. And we don't want that because all your organs are moving around. So around your lungs, we turn out to have a serous membrane to prevent any type of abrasion occurring. So that membrane also turns out to keep your lungs inflated. And if something were to happen that were to cause that membrane to become pierced, so it loses pressure, the result is what we call a pneumothorax or a collapsed lung. So it turns out to be a mildly big deal because we need to make sure that that membrane, that the serous membrane, or what we would call the pleura, that needs to remain intact because that, in part, keeps your lungs inflated. So if I were to zoom in, what we would see is eventually you get these little bubbly things called alveoli. Singular is called an alveolus. They turn out to be made out of simple squamous epithelium, and they turn out to be the location of gas exchange. They're surrounded by capillaries, so we have a simple squamous epithelium line, we'll have a membrane in between the two, and then we'll have another simple squamous epithelium. So we actually have the smallest possible distance for gas to need to travel from, in, from your lungs into your bloodstream. But in order to make that happen, we need to actually get blood or get air into your lungs. And the mechanism by which that happens turns out to be something that you learned about in chemistry. And we call that relationship Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law is you, get a, you have a fixed volume. You have a fixed volume, and what you can do, or a fixed space, and what you can do is if you warp its volume, you can warp the pressure inside of it. So by closing it, it gets harder. And then you open it up, and it becomes easier. So as I increase the volume, the pressure inside of here decreases. If I decrease the volume, the pressure inside increases. What's the point of that? Well, that turns out to be how you ventilate or how you breathe. You turn out to have several sets of muscles, primarily one that's hidden in here called your diaphragm. But we also use your intercostal muscles, so the internal and external intercostals. You could use your pectoralis major. You could use your rectus abdominis. We could use all sorts of muscles to manipulate the volume of your chest. And the result of that is if I can increase the volume of your chest, I will decrease the pressure in your chest in particular your lungs, and the result will be air is going to rush from the outside through your nose all the way down into your lungs. If I decrease the volume of your chest, thus decreasing the volume of your lungs, 
that's going to increase the pressure and it's going to force air from your lungs on out. It's what we call a negative ventilation system. It turns out to have lots of heavy regulation because you don't need to think about breathing, you just do. And there's several reflexes and we'll talk about these reflexes later, but it turns out we have two ways that we can breathe. I can either have my the top of my brain, what we would call the cerebrum, it can say, okay, time to breathe. And that's when you're choosing to breathe. But if you're not thinking about it, you have a default. And that default is found at the base of your brain or what we call the medulla. And inside of your medulla, you have centers that say, make sure you keep breathing. So even if you're not thinking about it, you're still breathing. Ultimately, when we breathe, we have various volumes that we can breathe in. What you breathe right now, which is normal breathing, we call your tidal volume. But you, there's a lot more air that you could breathe in that you normally don't breathe in. We call that your inspiratory reserve, so it's more air than normal. Much like how you can breathe out more air than normal, which we call the expiratory reserve volume. All three of those numbers, so your inspiratory reserve, how much extra you could breathe in, your tidal volume, and your expiratory reserve, how much extra you can breathe out, those constitute what we call your vital capacity, which is a nice way of saying all of this air that you are capable of moving. That is not your lung volume, because it turns out that we always have some air that remains trapped inside of us, and that no matter what, we're not going to be able to push it out, because to do that requires us to collapse your lungs. And that is what we call a residual volume, and that one, yeah, we're never going to measure that.